What is happening guys? Dealer back again with yet another video. Today we're talking about a Phil Spencer interview where he does talk about a ton of different things including PS5, the new Xbox Studios, Halo Infinite, and of course the Xbox Series X launch. I found this interview pretty interesting considering the console is actually officially launched right now and of course we get a little bit more perspective from the guy who helped mold this current Xbox that we have today. There is a ton to go over here guys. If you end up enjoying the video maybe hit the like button, show a friend or two and of course again left big toe reveal at 140,000 subs we are working our way towards that 100 and let's get into it now of course all credit for this interview goes to GameSpot I encourage you guys to check out the original interview linked down below in the source their first question more so regards how Xbox is approaching the modern gaming space Phil did have a few pretty interesting things to say here important for the team that we have a longer term plan that we can talk about because some of the incremental engineering decisions or even business decisions that we make have years to play out and we're lucky that we work at a company like Microsoft that is supporting our multi-year ambitions like xCloud and, um, and, and we'll get behind those things. So you have to have a long-term vision on where you're going otherwise you just are kind of misguided in the decisions that you're making. Now, Phil did talk about how the landscape is changing, and they do learn from all of these things that they experience as a games developer, publisher, and horror manufacturer. But really, there is a much better question that is asked following this, and that is regarding Series X and S, their launch titles, what happened there, and what does Phil think about the fact that there really isn't anything there from first party that really leverages the hardware, including ray tracing and more. I'll add to that that I've heard behind the scenes that there is only really one game that uses the new Xbox development kit to even make their port for Series S and X. There's only one game at this moment that really even has the tools that they are meant to have. Really, this launch is put together by a bunch of developers working a ton of overtime, and these guys are doing everything they can to keep these games rolling out and on time with these new systems. I don't expect to see a bunch of optimized titles on either side. I expect to see games that look great and are vastly improved in certain ways but really when it comes to inking out the power you are getting what they could manage and you know what even playing games like Valhalla right now trust me it is a transformative experience on console it's great that said there is much more left in the hardware down the line one of the big discussion points around the series x and series s which are out very soon um is the launch lineup and you've indicated previously that game pass is basically your big launch lineup uh, yeah. thing right given the library it's certainly a compelling one but is there a worry that no there's no big showpiece for what the console can do um the ui and the navigation stuff like as someone who's used it and the features the hardware have are doing a lot of heavy lifting in that regard and they have this, a definite wow factor um but is there a concern that there's not one game where you can put in and be like, holy moly, this is it, this is the next gen? Clearly, in terms of the dialogue you and I were have, or, or that, you know, some kind of the, I'll say, more traditional way of looking at a console launch, it's one of the things that people are looking at. I think there's some great games to go look at when you look at the games that are launching right now. I played all weekend playing AC Valhalla, and I think you know the team at Ubisoft have done a great job. I think about Watchdog Legions, which frankly isn't a franchise I've played a ton of, ton of but I really am I'm enjoying this game. I'm playing Tetris Effect, I'm playing games, but that's not to dissuade, like, you know, we've been clear, I wanted a Halo game at the right. launch of the console. But I will say that was more emotional than business driven. Like we're gonna be sold out of consoles come tomorrow. Yeah. And um, and that doesn't make me happy. I wish we had more consoles. I wish we could su supply all of the demand that will be out there. So I think from a PR standpoint, it would be nice because people could write about a, you know, a couple of good yeah. games. From a business standpoint, I'm not overly worried about it. And, fr and frankly, when those games will come i think will be a good opportunity for the console and we're really in more of a competitive battle because um, there's consoles from different uh from us and sony on the shelf so you mentioned it game pass is the thing that i really think differentiates our console platform right now and we've got 50 million subscribers doing incredibly well a great collection of games from so many partners our launch games go in day and date so gears tactics these games people who haven't played before can go play um, so I feel really, really good about the investment in Game Pass and how that stands up against any competitive offering out that's out there. 
So I'm going to point out something that Phil said uh, very specifically for a very specific reason uh, in a minute. And maybe some of you guys didn't catch it. Maybe some of you did. But I did want to talk about the launch lineup of Series X. If you watched my review, Microsoft sent me one of these early and I mentioned this in my review. Look, the software is definitely a thing from first party that didn't show up to really show you what the box was capable of. But of course, like always, there are third party games, both old and new, that will leverage power from the box. And if that's your preferred place to play and you've got the money, well, hey, no one can tell you what you should or shouldn't buy. But First Party was definitely a critique of mine, and Phil does say, hey, look, we've got a lot of titles in Game Pass, it's a great value, and I get that, while not also dodging the fact that they didn't really have much to launch with the system. But here's what he said that most of you should really focus on regarding the performance of the box. Frankly, when those games will come, I think will be a good opportunity for the console and we're really in more of a competitive battle. Now again, he is talking about those more demanding games that showcase the maximum potential of the box, which by the way, will continue to be made higher and higher with software throughout the generation as it progresses. He's definitely saying right now, today's software isn't really going to show you the maximum potential of the box, which makes sense, especially given what I had talked about earlier in the video. And no, that doesn't mean the games you aren't seeing today on Series X day one are not absolutely gorgeous. Yes, they look really, really good. And of course, as you guys Guys know this is definitely xbox series x gameplay enjoy if youtube finally decided to start working correctly and allow my videos to process up to 4k then you should be seeing this at maximum fidelity but if not it will be 1080p at what looks like a pretty low bitrate look long story short what phil is saying in that little clip there is only confirming what i've been saying day one is not even the beginning for the capability of the box and you will only see these games to look better through time specifically if you want to see the power and what it's really capable of if you really want to stack it against the competition Petition, the games will do so in time over time but we've talked about that actually for a couple of years that we're going to start to feel game they feel as good as games have looked because you know an xbox one x has done a really good job allowing developers to to put amazing looking games on screen so i, I think the leap will be gradual as it is in most generations because developers will get used to the tools but at the same time we've seen some really great work on pc so people know what these high graphic bar games are going to look like when they come to console games like a flight sim which will come to console you know when that comes to the xbox series x it's going to look fantastic um i've been very focused on on how things play and how they feel and i love the work that like moon has done with ori and coalitions done with gears in terms of pressure on the teams. There's always pressure on the teams, but it's more self-inflicted. Um, we have, as you said, we have Game Pass. We've got a lot of support from the company. I don't need to push um, half done games out. I can make sure that we get to the point where we really believe in where we are with the game. Um, and some of those games will continue to grow after they launch uh, and, and feel good about that. So definitely want to make sure we get the games right. Um, more than hit an individual date. Now, I really like this for multiple reasons. For one, I just want games to be great. I want them to be finished. I want them to be polished. I want them to be quality. I want them to be every single thing they need to be. There is no such thing as a bad game delay to me, but you know, you might be different. On one hand, you had to wait a bit longer for what is likely a better game. And that's really what it comes down to. You're going to be living with these games for longer than ever. I think developers are going to spend more time pushing out expansions and content updates and you might as well do that off of what is so much more of a strong foundation to do so but you know what let me know your thoughts on that down below i think we can all agree that a more finished more polished game a game with more features and more content is better than the opposite do you still feel it has that power i definitely think it has the potential for that power um, I think there's something iconic about Bungie's creation originally about Master Chief. You know, I teasingly call him John Wayne in space, but like this, you know, this iconic character, hero character uh, that I think people are drawn to. Um, and when I look at how well Master Chief Collection has done, say as it's gone to PC um, and as 343s continue to evolve it even now for um, Xbox Series X and Series S, there's high level of interest. With high level of interest comes a lot of pressure on the team, comes a lot of emotion when we don't hit a date that we wanted to hit. I take all of that emotion and feel that I have as a positive sign for the franchise. That said, there are a lot more big franchises now in gaming than there were back when Halo 1, 2 and 3 launched. 
And I think that's a good thing for our industry and a good thing for Xbox. The fact that we can have a diversity of franchises and what those mean. Um, so I don't think a platform has to define, we get the, you know, who's your iconic character on a platform? I think you are the iconic character on our platform. It's not any one of our individual franchises. And, um, and, I, and I think that's a strength, but I have a ton of belief in Halo and 343 and where we're going. And I've played uh, quite a bit of Infinite and I'm looking forward to other people getting to play. When you said you Quality and something that will be around for decade plus, absolutely. Um, is it beholden on us to treat that franchise and the, and the stories and the characters the right way? Yes, and listen to our customers? Absolutely. But I, I think Halo is around for a long time. Look, you guys already know my opinion on this. I said the second Domino's is taking shots, that's a problem. When Domino's is talking, that's a problem. And, uh, you know, they put Craig back in the oven, put some textures on his forehead, give us the Halo fans deserve, and turn people that don't care for Halo into Halo fans. That should be the goal. It seems like Phil is uh, confident in the time they're giving Halo, and ultimately we will have to see. Now, when regarding first-party studios, PlayStation 5, and what they might be looking to acquire next in the Japanese region, quote-unquote, Bill does say the following. Well, I do want people to make what they're good at. So then the question is, as we think about how we grow studios with Matt Booty and I, do we look for teams that are different at, or good at things that are different than what our current stable of, of studios um, have as skills? And I think you point out something that's right, that we, when we looked even at the ZeniMax you know, acquisition, which obviously we've announced that it's not closed, um, we didn't look at that and say, okay, this diversifies our portfolio from like a color tone or a, a rating standpoint, you know, but I thought it was some really, really talented teams that we wanted to go work with. When I think about forward, going forward, I do think we need different genres, different color palettes, different stories, different game ratings coming from different parts of the world. I think that's an important next step for us when we look at opportunities. Now, some of the opportunities are inbound. Some of us are us reaching out. Um, so you don't always get to pick exactly the game that's coming. You know, I'm excited about games like Psychonauts and what Double Fine's gonna go do um, beyond even what Psychonauts is, but it's unfair to put all the weight on one studio to say, okay, um, you, you're our, non-M-rated studio. I mean, you um, mentioned new so. opportunities before and uh, your first party. There was a report recently from Bloomberg which said that several Japan-based devs have been approached about acquisition. Is there any truth to that? I don't think so. Like it's, we're usually not out there. I say I don't think so. I mean, I'm not in every meeting that every team has, but I'll say not from me. Um, you know, it's, most of the opportunities that we've had to date have been a long lasting relationship. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't think we're out there with, uh, you know, our business card, throwing them out on the corner, uh, <laughs> trying to find people. I, I've talked about my affinity for Japanese studios and th thinking back in the day when we had more games that were created in Japan as part of our first party. Uh, I'm excited you know, when the deal closes to get to spend more time with Tango and this work that they're doing. Um, but you know, so it's an area that I'm interested in, but mm. no, I don't think it's, I, I think that's I think not that's accurate. accurate. A quick, quick follow up. Uh, yeah. Have you, have you played a PlayStation five? What do you think of it? Um, have I played a PlayStation five? I'd be careful on this one. Um, <laughs> I will say what happens. I haven't played a retail PlayStation five, so I don't have one. Right. Um, okay. What happens when we go into studios is there's development kits from all the platforms around. So like we all kind of know what we're all doing. Yeah. Um, and I've definitely played games. I think, you know, Sony's done a really nice job with the PlayStation five. Um, I think the plans that they're, they're doing something different than us, um, which is fine. I think it's good that you have different platforms um, doing different things. I know their launch is imminent. I will I'll say good luck to Jim and Mark and all the teams there because launches are, um, you know, kind of cool of great events and and congratulations to the team there and what they've done. So, um, but I, and no, I haven't, I, have, I don't have a retail unit uh, yeah. yet. I will get one and, uh, and I look forward to it. Phil has definitely played some kind of PlayStation 5, probably a development kit. And of course, you know what? Uh, I thought that was a pretty interesting perspective given that some of their studios actually have PS5 development kits right now. Whereas I'm sure a Sony studio or two has a Series X development kit. Uh, for example, the MLB The Show developers, uh, that game is now coming to Xbox starting 2021. Yes, it is only six or so months away. I do believe it releases in the spring. But yeah, personally on this next segment, and I will 
we'll end it here. Bill does go into detail on how they are launching in different territories, how the box is doing, and I'll say it, this is me, not him. Don't expect any kind of MPD win in the States here with the Xbox series of consoles because, you know what, Phil is basically saying it to you right here. We've said this several weeks ago on RDX Podcast. Microsoft are spreading their stock out more globally this time. They did not have all the Xboxes they could have even come close to selling in the States over launch because they did put them in other territories. And Phil is basically hinting at this right now. Other than that, guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, show a buddy or two, and of course, let me know your thoughts, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you to everyone that's helped me hit almost 100,000 subscribers. I plan on hitting that soon. Check the source description down below. And of course, shout out to all the patrons, channel members, all that good stuff. Again, I will leave you with this final clip and uh, let me know your thoughts. And, you know, fans and customers of ours there saw that um, and it clearly showed a lack of appreciation and support for those markets for our platform. And so starting from let's make sure that we're launching um, in all the markets where we want to have the console kind of globally at the same time, just to show respect for the customers there. That was important. I absolutely feel like um, we're going to continue to make a, a, a good I feel like we've we've got the best opportunity we've ever had in a, in a generation to do well in those markets. Um, we our pre-order in Japan sold out almost instantly. Um, our pre-order numbers exceeded our Xbox One sales for the previous year. Um, that was our pre-order on that one day. So when you just think about the volume and the interest that's there, um, and that's specific to Japan. And like I said, when I think about xCloud and how that's doing in, in Korea, um, when I think about the China market with PC and other things that we're doing, I feel like we are better positioned because we're less reliant on any one specific device. And as you mentioned, even in the console space, we have Series S. Uh, which I think you know, clearly has a design and, and form factor and price point um, that we believe can do well. It's going to be about the games, um, which is why we continue to spend time in Japan with our partners there um, and getting games like Fantasy Star and Yakuza and other games coming to the platform. Um, more work to do there. Um, it's kind of never, we're, we'll never be done with that. Uh, but I feel good about the opportunity ahead, absolutely.